just ask you to rate whether- We're in Columbus, Ohio, at the Ohio State University's Clinical Research Center. The couple on the left, Eve and Bud, are going to let the researchers probe into the most private areas of their marriage. Now you should start like right here in the middle. The researchers are trying to see if the psychological health of the marriage has any effect on the physical health of the couple. Okay, great. It's a gruesome but ingenious technique. The couple's given superficial skin wounds on the arm. Eight small blisters produced using a suction pump. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this on. Okay. Now, do you feel that? Yeah, I feel it. Okay, okay. It's an uncomfortable process, but not painful. Yes, I Bud will get his blisters <laughs> next. Just gonna do the best you can to fill out the bubbles. It's not a big deal. Okay. Sure. She cheats on all tests, you know that, don't you? Psychologist Tim Loving asks Eve and Bud to assess how much they disagree in typical sensitive areas, like money or in-laws. A zero score means no disagreement, so it seems Eve and Bud, who have been married 13 years, get along pretty well. After 10 minutes, nurse Lois Grinston checks oh, her handiwork. Lovely. Oh, just lovely. The idea is to follow how well even Bud's lovely blisters heal over the course of the next month and to see if the stress levels in their marriage have any effect. Ninety couples are in the study. The healing process will be monitored visually and by measuring the rate the blisters dry out. Also, during the first 24 hours, fluid placed in little chambers above the wounds will be drawn off. The fluid will be assayed for the chemicals which the body's immune system sends to wound sites to get healing started. Okay, guys, we're getting ready to get started now. And I'm going to close the curtain. With the blisters in place and Lois Grinston ready to draw blood samples, Eve and Bud are supposed to start arguing. Likely hot topics have been suggested by the researchers after exploring with the couples the questionnaires they had filled out. For Eve and Bud, they've zeroed in on Bud's hearing aid, or rather his lack of a hearing aid. When they put me in the casket, you can go ahead and put now the hearing we, aid in my ear. The bad thing is we even have a hearing aid at home that you could wear so that you won't have to keep saying, what, 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 even when we're watching a movie. As with the hostility study we saw earlier, blood samples will show what levels of stress hormones the argument stimulates. Rewinding the movie so you can hear what they said, which is aggravating. Well, you should put the hearing aid in your ear and listen to the listen movies for a while movies. and see what the hearing aid sounds like. You've never had it in. How do you know? You've never tried to watch a movie with it. I watch a movie with one sometime. In fact, their hearts aren't really in this argument. One sometime. Next time we watch a movie. Okay, I'll go rent one tonight. Uh, I didn't say that quite that soon. <laughs> I don't Bud and Eve are really pretty good friends. Their argument provoked no stress hormones in the blood, their immune systems responded strongly to the blisters, and healing was close to complete by around day 12. They're a typical unstressed couple with healthy immune systems. Now let's follow Deb and Mike through the same procedure. They've been married 10 years. They don't regard their relationship as terrible, but neither one has any difficulty coming up with multiple areas of disagreement. The researchers have several topics to suggest for discussion. For Mike and Deb, how to divide time between chores and relaxation is a contentious area. Observing this session is Janice Keekholt Glazer, the psychology professor who developed these tests. Well, we, oh, wait. we can. Number one. Well, we can start Number talking. one, two hours. You know, oh. I put my workout schedule together for you on the fridge so you can see what oh. days I'm going to run. <laughs> number one, you need a healthy heart. And number two. As like before, blood samples are taken to measure stress yeah. hormone I talk levels. About excessiveness. I talk about in our lives right now. That's how you accomplish things. We're, we are so busy from the minute we wake up till the minute we go to sleep. Take, for instance, the morning. When I wake up, mm -hmm. you wake up. You get yourself ready, mm -hmm. and you go to work. Yep. I get myself up, I get myself ready, I do a load of laundry, ch 
check the emails, pack the kids' lunches, put the dishes away. I if you guys get together once in a while, whether it be in the evening, How long is once in a while? I don't know. I mean, I don't Deb know. and Mike may not have a perfect relationship, but as with almost all the couples in the study, it's still a marriage that works. In fact, Deb and Mike don't regard this argument as especially stressful. You got to do it the way I like it. The couples who tended to be nastier or more hostile toward each other had higher elevations in stress hormones, particularly the women, um, and they had greater changes 24 hours later in terms of a whole battery of different immunological assays. We were surprised because the conflicts, the discussions of disagreement, weren't what you'd call heated or nasty by and large. It's only a relative kind of thing. These were very happy couples. They only represented, among the, the sample we had, only 3% would be what we would call distressed couples based on the way they described their marriages. And yet we could find these reliable relationships between physiology and behavior. Here are the blisters, unhealed at day six in one of those mildly stressed marriages. And here they are, nearly healed at the same day in an unstressed marriage. It's a dramatic contrast given the relatively low stress levels involved. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Dr. Poole, it's nice to meet you. So what are we supposed to be doing today? Today is head and neck. Head and neck exam. These are medical students in the last few weeks before important exams. It's the kind of high stress situation we all find ourselves in from time to time. Uh, you could look through the Look through the scalp, see if there's a... This is another Ohio State study. This time to see if it's possible to deliberately counteract the effects of stress. John Stauffer and Ben Taylor are second year students just coming up for their first clinical exams. A total of 57 students received the same blister wounds the married couples got, with the progress of healing to be tracked in the same way. We place it just on top like that. Soraya Rafaga is just completing her neurology rotation, and she has a big final exam in two weeks. Well, she's a 21-year-old white female with a 15-month history of weakness in her lower extremities, which began in July 2001, um, when she noticed like, increased difficulty when she was walking to and from work. She has had increased weakness in the past. The students continue with their routines as the blisters on their arms heal. Cane, so functionally, she's really decreased, and they're thinking about putting her in a wheelchair. The students were randomly assigned to two groups. John Stauffer was in the group that was simply left to cope with the stress in their own ways. But Ben Taylor's group got something extra. Breathe slowly and deeply. You let tension go and you let yourself go deeper. Begin by relaxing your right foot, just letting the tension flow out. Throughout the pre-exam period, all of Ben's group attended frequent sessions in which they received standard relaxation therapies. Down into your fingertips, every muscle fiber just letting go. All the students were tested again to compare healing during a relaxed, exam-free period. That ensures it was really the stress of exams being assessed, not simply the stress of receiving the blister wounds. The study showed that students under a pretty common kind of stress suffered the same effects as the stressed married couples. Increased stress hormones in the blood, reduced immune system function, and delayed wound healing. But it also showed that the simple relaxation therapies that Ben's group received were remarkably effective. Their blister wounds healed up as rapidly as everyone's did during the relaxed non-exam period. The conclusion that our immune systems don't work so well when we're under psychological stress is completely consistent with what we know about the fight or flight stress response. After all, the whole point of the stress response is to briefly shut down non-essentials while we make a quick getaway. You can afford to put off fighting infections for 30 seconds. But that means long-lasting stress makes us more vulnerable to disease. Exactly which diseases or how severe they might become is still controversial. But the basic conclusion that chronic stress and disease go together is beyond doubt. Next, we're going to explore further 
what we can do about stress. So that's picking up what? This is the photoplethysmograph, and this is picking up your skin conductance, which is another way of saying your skin sweating. You sweat uh, uh, enough uh, to, uh, to, to indicate a change in, um, I mean, a, a subtle change? Oh, in yes. Every time you experience any kind of emotional change, your circulation changes. I always seem to be the guinea pig on Frontiers. This time they want to see if I can relax. What I'm going to do now is just wipe off your forehead just okay. to get any extra oil off and put the muscle tension monitor on you. Okay. Sensor. Okay. Now, a muscle, well, how, how do you measure muscle tension on my forehead? I have, I, I'm not known for the muscles in my forehead. Well, there's not a lot of fatty tissue on the forehead, mm -hmm. and it's considered to be a good indicator of the muscle tension in the rest of your body. What happens? What are you, what are you measuring? Well, it actually measures the electrical impulses put out by the muscle. Oh. 